Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Yasha, if you're new here, and today I wanted to talk about the differences between large programs and small programs, and kind of the pros and cons of each one. So the main difference between large and small programs is the number of residents. So some places have as small as like two or three residents per year, and some go all the way up to like six, seven, eight, even more per year. And so obviously those things make a difference when it comes to you know, your daily life, when it comes to um, fellowship, when it comes to the number of faculty and how personal it is. So just think about those things when you're applying. Now, obviously, when you're at a smaller program, the volume is usually lower and it's usually less faculty or less attendings. It's just important to realize that the volume is usually kind of proportional to how many attendings there are. So just because a lot of places boast that they see like this much volume per year, just remember that like you have to divide that by the total number of people reading the studies. And as a resident, you still might end up with a higher volume as a resident at a smaller program rather than a large program. I'm not saying this is always true, but just something to consider. That all of those studies need to be read by, you know, either a small number or a large number of people. So when you divide it all out, I have a feeling it's really not that different at small programs versus large programs. One of the advantages I find of a small program is how personal you can get with all of your attendings. And I know that at any program you can make a really close relationship with a mentor and you end up learning a lot about that person, but I find that at my program, which is a really, really small program, three per year, I actually end up learning about all of the attendings at that level. And I can basically work with any single attending and basically have a good time, joke around, know the ins and outs of their life and their kids and their pets. and. That's kind of a different relationship you get than when you're at a larger program, but don't quote me on that. Like I said, I'm not at a larger program, and I know that you do make really close relationships with mentors and certain people, no matter where you are. So, another thing to consider. And going off of that, when it comes time to apply for fellowship, you really want to have letters and references from people that really know you in and out. And usually you need about three people. So your program director, someone in your specialty that you're applying to, and then one other person. And I found that I could have probably asked any of my attendings to do that for me. But it's just something to think about, that like the level of personalization really does end up helping you a lot when it comes to fellowship application time. One of the major differences between large and small programs is probably how academic they are. Smaller programs tend to be a little bit less academic, and large programs tend to be very academic. So if this is something that you want out of your residency in terms of publishing a lot of papers, you know, you want to go into academics, you do want to think about going to a place that will support you for that. And what I mean by support is they will actually kind of contribute to your papers. They will be able to take time out of their day to help you with it. And at smaller programs like mine, our attendings are very busy. You know, either they are working and they're working full time or they are not at work and they're on vacation. Versus at academic programs, they have more academic days, they have more time to maybe review things, to contribute, to do an IRB. And so this is something to also consider. If you do find that you're in a position where you want to go into academics, you want to research a lot, but you don't have the scores to get into a big competitive academic program, you can always go to a smaller program that has connections at other large academic programs, like ours. We have rotations at MGH and Boston Children's, which are very academic, and you can definitely get a lot of publications out of those rotations. At the same time, no matter where you are, you can always reach out on social media, and if you're in a geographical location with a lot of other hospitals, like I know in St. Louis there are multiple hospitals, you can definitely find a mentor at another institution where they might have more time to support what you want to do. The alumni network is another thing that you want to consider when you are applying to different programs. So smaller programs obviously have less alumni because we have you know less people graduating per year and larger programs will obviously have a lot more. And alumni become helpful when you're applying for fellowship, you know there's a higher likelihood that someone might already be at the program that you want to go to or when you're looking for a job in a certain geographical area or at a certain practice, again, higher likelihood that someone has already been there. And also with more people, there's just a higher likelihood that they might know somebody at that place. So it's just simply a numbers game in that way. So that would probably be an, another advantage to go to a larger program. An advantage of smaller programs that I think a lot of people do end up talking about is the ability to do more things hands-on. 
So obviously at larger programs, they usually also have fellows, they have a lot of fellows, and fellows always get first dibs. You know, it's their last year of training, they have to do it all that year because they're gonna be attending next year. And so residents often get shafted and just get to watch or they don't get to do nearly as much. But at smaller programs, you know, you're the first person to get to do everything. And so I know at our program, we have a lot of outside people coming in to do interventional radiology at our program. And when we're on MAMO, when we're on breast imaging, and when we are on like MSK, fluoro, we get to do all of those things ourselves. There's nobody trying to fight with us for those um, cases. So that's one advantage of smaller programs that I think is really useful, especially if you want to do something procedure-based in your career. One of the disadvantages of going to a small program is that usually there is more call, and it really just depends on your program because some places, you know, a very small group of people takes call, like only the R3s or only the R4s or only the R2s, and other programs, you know, it's kind of split amongst everyone, so you do have to just kind of check each program and see if this is something that's really important to you. I always suggest don't look at the call schedule when you judge a program because Call, I mean, call has its advantages, you know, you learn to be an attending during those times, but it's up to you. I don't think that the call schedules are so different that it would really change where it is on your rank list, but this is a personal decision, and smaller programs in general do end up having more call than larger programs simply because there are less people, so just something to consider. So anyways, I hope that was helpful. That was a quick rundown between the differences between a small program and the large program, and kind of the major things that may help you decide where you want to end up. But if you have any questions, of course, reach out on Twitter at YashaGuptaMD, same on Instagram, and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye. The more you talk about trying to look for the smaller programs, all of you. Here, I'll leave it.